Also, last but not least, I need it for Grant, and Grant will go first. Favorite Shawn Michaels moment. Oh, my God. All right. So I think I, – I, I feel like – there's a lot of ways you can go with this because for me, and I don't know if you, Champ BRF, y'all know this. Shawn Michaels is my goat uh, of all time because I look at it as a guy. So I'm the biggest Shawn Michaels fan, especially because I look at his career in general. He essentially accomplished everything in WWE and still was able to be a top star in the company. But if I have to pick a moment, especially. SummerSlam 2002, when he came back for the first time in over five years after his back injury, and everyone thought he wouldn't be able to wrestle, because I remember the main thing everyone thought at the time was, would Sean still be able to complete a match in a, the way they were building it? Because keep in mind, that match at SummerSlam with Triple H was an unsanctioned. So essentially, it was everything goes. You see that? Go back and watch that match. If you never have, if anyone who goes to watches that match, Sean puts on what I believe to be a top five Shawn Michaels match of all time. Just from a ring standpoint, how the tempo of the match, the spots they did, the main spot where he jumped off the top turnbuckle onto Triple H into the table. And like, you know, you can't write it better than that. And the ending when he... Had the when he had the back pin and then he got hit in the back, but triple just just great storytelling which led into one of the greatest rivalry one of the greatest rivalries in the history of WWE. But just my God, go back and go in the back and watch that match. It's it's a spectacle of work. It was one of Shawn's greatest matches, and I don't think there would be any other way you could talk about a wrestler who was able to return, have a better return match than what Michaels had. Champ. Oh man, when I think about Sean, man, Sean Michaels was one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest. I mean, you think about the people sleep on how good the Montreal screw job um, match was because of the controversy, but that was a great match. But if I had to put take one, if I had to take one, it would have to be, it would have to be. Three Stages of Hell, Armageddon, 2002. The one with Triple H? Yes. They was going at it. I watched that. I literally, I, I'm not going to lie. This when DVR first came out. I'm showing my age, but I had to say, I literally rewind that damn match three times after I ordered it. I, re, I kept rewinding because the thing is, it was just that good. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody knows. Hey, man. Triple H can beat the best of the best in three stages of hell. Beat Stone Rock, Cold Steve Austin. Beat Stone Cold. And even though Shawn Michaels lost that match, for them to be in a lockdown, drag out match like that. Remember the first one? I mean, and it wasn't conventional. Remember the first fall was a street fight. Then a steel cage match. Then yeah, a ladder match. Then a ladder match. Then a ladder match. Yeah. So for you to go through all of that, man, and although he lost, man, that was nothing short of just spectacular theater, especially you know, especially back then, man. Triple H, the beginning with the beginning of evolution coming into the fold, and you know, Triple H ascending to one of the top heels, maybe of all time during that time, where he was just flat out just burying people. And for you to come out and and like I said, during that year, the piggyback on Grant, not to steal his thunder, but he had just came back four mm -hmm. months ago prior to that match. And remember, he won the Elimination Chamber in November, the month before. I should have gone Elimination Chamber. And then oh, came that, back that, and did three stages of hell. So my thing is, I, that is one of the greatest matches that you will ever see, especially when you're going against a guy like a Triple H who was a top heel at the time. The beginning of evolution, him and Ric Flair, that was memorable, man. That that was flat out special. No doubt about it. BRF. Mm. Oh, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels. 
Boy, y'all hit a y'all hit a special place in my heart for this one. Um, I feel like well, I feel like the two greatest in ring performers in the history of the sport are Shawn Michaels and AJ Styles. And you can argue with your mama with me about that one. That's just how I feel. <laughs> um, if I had to pick one moment, because I practically. Yeah, cause that, and that's what I tell people. Champ talk people because Champ always talk about his age. I'm older than Champ. I'm a few years older than Champ. So like, I remember I remember Sean from like the Rockers era. You know how he was basically the kickstarter for the new generation era, and then kind of like on the back end at the first part of his career, going into the Attitude era, and then the comeback. I feel like he had a better second run of his career. Than, than, in the his, 90s. Than, than his 90s runs, and he was winning championships in the 90s. But I feel like his 2002 through his WrestleMania 26 match, that was just like, like that was just Shawn Michaels, like how good he, how good he was. If I had to pick one moment to illustrate why I love him so much, even though he didn't win either match. WrestleMania 25 and WrestleMania 26 with The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are my two favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. I mean, those two guys, basically, if if Undertaker called himself the last outlaw of the Attitude Era, Shawn Michaels was right there with him. And for them to put on those two, I'm talking about, I still feel... If I had a list of 10 greatest WrestleMania matches of all time, for me, Undertaker Shawn Michaels, even though we just saw what Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns just did, Undertaker Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 25 is still my all-time favorite WrestleMania match. Just the storytelling and the storytelling and Shawn just trying to do everything in his power to beat the Undertaker and really just the beginning of, in my opinion, I felt the greatest four year stretch of Undertaker matches. 25 and 26 with Sean, 27 and 28 with Triple H. And then Sean Michaels re re-inter- interjecting himself, being a special referee for that Hell in a Cell in the Venera match for WrestleMania 28. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that four year stretch. Especially when Undertaker- he super kicked. Um- Taker and then oh. Triple H with the pedigree. Bro, I thought I, I thought I thought I thought I thought the street was when when that moment happened, I thought the street was over. I, I saw that's a lot of us felt. I had a friend who was at the I, I had a friend who was at that main WrestleMania. He tells me as soon as Sean kicked him, the whole crowd was screaming and they thought it was over. As yeah. soon as he kicked out, I, he said he's never heard a crowd go go that insane over a kick out. Oh like because everyone God. thought it was over. I thought it was they thought that was it. it. I and when he kicked going. out, it was like the biggest, oh my god, moment I've I, ever I, seen. In my life. I, I think for WrestleMania 26 with Sean is when he kicked out of the Tombstone Pile Driver. I think the first or the second time, and then Undertaker had like a huge stun or disbelief on his face. Mm-hmm. So, no, I like the I like the gym. I, no, I, it's, it's the Jim Ross one. Oh my, yeah, god. the WrestleMania 25, the Jim Ross call. I just had an out of body experience with Shawn Michaels kicked out of the twos, though. Yeah, like just oh, oh, I mean, those matches was just storytelling and psychology. If you if you're a guy getting into wrestling and you want to understand the full concept of what storytelling and psychology is in a wrestling match. Watch, tw- watch, watch WrestleMania 25 and 26, and you will come away from both of those matches, and you're just like, okay, I understand now. I can do this. Though, for me, if I had to put just that, sh- even though he didn't win any of those matches, that is Shawn Michaels in a nutshell because he's just, you know, his record at, Miss- uh, at WrestleMania, right? It's not good. It's not good. It's horrible. It's not good. It's but terrible. they call him Mr. WrestleMania. Mr. WrestleMania because he put off banger after banger. 21, because I'll say this. My other match I was going to say, WrestleMania 21, Kurt Angle, Shawn Michaels is a five-star classic. That's for a five-star match. Four four. That match how was did, unbelievable. WrestleMania how that didn't 22, get a five-star rating baffles me. Mm-hmm. I, Dave Meltz, that's why I don't trust Dave Meltzer's ratings, because they don't know. They claim they know what they're mm-hmm. talking about, but they just will say stupid yeah, stuff. Yeah, they yeah, wrestle- like, I'm looking at the Dave Meltzer stuff, and I'm just like, 
you gonna look at me with a straight face and you gonna tell me you don't think Kurt Angle's ever had a five star match and you weren't paying attention to WrestleMania 21? You must be joking. And I, I think it's mainly because you know with New Japan and the Japanese form and how it's more fluid and more um more rhythmic, if that makes sense. The way the pace of the match rolls, I think he prefers that more than the style that WWE does. Where rather than tell a story, they want to like they actually wrestle, and I think that's what he prefers. But to get I, really, I quick, agree with that. I agree. To with get that. back to what I was trying to say, WrestleMania going. To, they call him Mister WrestleMania for a reason. WrestleMania twenty, uh, he had that triple threat match between Shaw, um, Triple H and the other Good gentleman, man. which I'm not gonna say. We, we know where I'm going with this. 21, Angle versus Michaels. 22, Vince McMahon versus Shawn Michaels. Jumps <laughs> off the ladder. McMahon's in the trash can with the elbow. No, no, great. Hang- we got some other stuff. Remember when Vince does uh, the, the the cover for a Muscle Men's magazine? Muscle and Fitness magazine. And then yeah. Hot hits him. With, with the- <laughs> That whole feud was so petty. Only, only Shawn Michaels could get a match of the year candidate out of Vince McMahon, like just straight up. <laughs> yeah, my favorite, one of my favorite Shawn Michaels moments. I'm surprised none of y'all mentioned WrestleMania 10, the ladder match with Razor Ramon. I was gonna mention it, but I if... think the sum, I think the SummerSlam ladder match is better, but that's just my opinion. But. I got to go WrestleMania 12, the Iron Man match between he and Bret oh, the yeah. Hitman Hart. The I mean, you're talking about two of the greatest in-ring performers. Bret, we all know, consummate professional, in-ring technician, the Hart family. Matter of fact, BRF, correct me if I'm wrong, you were the one who said Owen Hart, rest his soul, was a better technician than even Bret. Yeah, I, 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 and as great as Brett the Hitman Hart was, I stand by that. Right. And Brett, we all know what, how great he was in the ring. I thought he had great brawling skills as well. And with Shawn there, an hour long match and the entrance with Shawn Michaels as he enters uh, WrestleMania 12. That's also iconic for me. And, uh, um, but man, Shawn Michaels. Let, let's be honest, in the 90s, he wasn't the most likable person in the world. And my man Champ, give me, uh, I give, I got to give him credit because he said it himself. Had Shawn Michaels had not dropped the belt to Steve at WrestleMania 14, Taker would have made an appearance. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I, I think he, and I think he said, I think he said that too because he, he wanted did. To drop he that, did. He wanted to drop that. Yeah, he did. He because he wanted business to be taken care of. He said it would have been a long night for Shawn Michaels, but um, Shawn and Taker they developed their relationship in 2002. That's when Shawn came back from retirement, not just because of the bad back. He also needed to take some time off because he had a lot of other problems. Taker and Shawn they have a great relationship, from what I know. Um, Taker. Back then, he had nothing to do with Sean. He wanted nothing to do with Sean as a person. But in the ring, Sean would be that type of guy. WrestleMania 10 and 12 got to be for me. The other match, I would have to say, Ric Flair's last match. Mm-hmm. When oh, yeah. Sean hits him with the super kick, and then he tells Rick, I'm sorry. I love you. And Sean growing up. That was Ric Flair's type of guy he always idolized. You know, like Ric Flair with the style and, and, and everything else, man. And, and, and Sean, man, he had charisma. And the reason, and I told Champ this story. You know, Jim Ross on his podcast, Champ, they paid Sean $750,000 for four years for Sean to do nothing. And the only reason why they were afraid of that is because, one, Vince viewed him so highly, and he didn't want him to go to their arch rival WCW. Mm-hmm. But with but with Sean, I think funny funniest moment. Now I don't know if I, no, I can't, I I can't, I can't use that one. I I, I don't want to go that far. I have, I haven't, I haven't, I have an all time funniest Sean Michaels moment. Go ahead. <sighs> I'm gonna be completely honest with you. The funny, like the apex of funny Shawn Michaels 
was the entire 2006 rebirth of Den- of D-Generation X run with him and Triple H? Yes. Oh, my God. I just kicked Stan. Stan. <laughs> don't tell me to call that down. Is- so don't tell me to call down. Or yeah, exactly. you telling me or when I, to- I don't know how to be controversial. That was one of the funniest things. Or the headquarters. Remember when he and Triple H at the headquarters? They they get they they spray painted the plane, they spray painted the building, and they moon the camera at the top of the building. <laughs> Just oh my god, two thousand six DX when they decided to get back together. That's just, that was that, that whole was, thing that was, with McMahon's. Was oh, amazing. when they was, cut when they went when the, when Vince banned them from the arena and they went into the production oh, truck oh and god. screwed up the oh mic system. Oh my god! Oh my god! Like, oh my oh my god. god. And he's talking like Alvin the Chipmunk. It was oh my god! I can't believe his all of us forgot this moment. This was like two moments, not only from Shawn Michaels but from Degeneration X. The oh the Monica, remember Bill Clinton with the Monica? Oh the yeah, the G Generation X. <laughs> yes. Oh, you, yeah. Oh, you, you mean you mean you mean you mean like the, the, we the, the, promise the not to promo. curse and immediately curses right after. It's like Sean, right? Oh my bad. He, I mean no, I mean no. <laughs> and of course, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson oh. back in the day joined DX. I was coming to that. I was coming. I just, that whole feud. Oh, was with Stone Cold when Stone Cold got in the ring because people don't understand. Around that time, Mike Tyson was the most dangerous man alive. Like yeah. he killed everybody. And the fact that Austin, the dude who did not care, walked up to Tyson and started talking trash. And as soon as he throws a punch, all you hear from JR goes, Tyson and Austin, Tyson and Austin. It has to got a fight going on. It was so crazy. And then when WrestleMania hit, he he counted Austin to win the title for him. And turned on the, that just, and knocked out Shawn Michaels. <laughs> oh, no, man. Man. Hey. And then Jim yeah. Ross is saying, Tyson, Tyson, Tyson. <laughs> we gonna do favorite Jim Ross moment. Don't forget that we will do that for next week's show. And make sure you don't. Uh, make sure, guys, when you come on, you don't curse because you know we all know how you know Jim Ross was when it came to certain people. And man, he hated Triple H. <laughs> hated Triple H. Yeah. I just saw a club list the other day of just him like saying everything under the sun about Triple H. I was like, I, th- I think Triple H might have just like. Kidnapped his dog or something. It's just like that's what caused him to be so bad. Jim, Jim, Jim Ross put heel Triple H over so good. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Oh my god! Especially oh, SummerSlam. Remember, because as your point to your point, Grant, when Triple H hit Sean in the back, uh, in the back with the sledgehammer, and then we can't use the type of language, but my God, Jim Ross was after like Triple H. Do you have that's- no heart? Do you have do no, you have no soul? soul? Do you realize what you did? Oh, done? bro, that ain't nothing compared to how he went in the night after WrestleMania. After WrestleMania 19, when Stone Cold did, couldn't wrestle anymore. Eric like, Bischoff. Eric 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 Bischoff. You know what? I, I go back to this day and I wonder to myself whether that was real or was that just like him, like, Going out there and pull it again. I think it was kind of real because real. remember Bischoff did fire Austin in '95 in WCW. That's oh, true. Again, That's what I think. I think. Yeah, I, I think, think that was like a work. I think that was like a, a not a true shoot, but it was like a work shoot. Yeah, yeah. I agree too. I but because you watch that go, if you watch that whole uh, promo he cuts, you hear it at first, and it sounds like he's got legit. Because keep in mind. I saw this. Uh, they have this really interesting thing during that period, like right after the period, he and Bischoff had tension going on between them. And the storyline that they were pushing, I think, was eventually that they were going to fire that Jim Ross was going to get fired. And he, they say, and I think they said, go out there and cut a promo and just basically say, you know, Eric Bischoff is it this, Eric Bischoff is it that, blah, blah, blah. And he said, all right, and just proceeds to absolutely crucify this man. 
And to this day, I still never will be considered that that was a work. I still think he was speaking from the heart because he was I mean, mad. But but Bischoff did piss off a lot of people. And look at the type of talent he let go of WCW, not just Steve, Mick Foley as well. And, and, and look at all the other people that he ran, um, that he let go and how he was running WCW at the time. Mm. And there is and when Jim Ross said it, and we all know how tight Jim and Steve are in terms of their relationship. To me, WWE wise, that's like Ahmad Rashad with Michael Jordan. Oh, my, oh that's a good comparison. Yeah. yeah, because nobody knows Steve Austin better than Jim. Steve doesn't have that many friends. And remember, DTA, don't trust anybody. If there's certain people that people talk to. Jim Ross will be the first one that Steve will call. That's a fact. 